Most modern shoes have a narrow toe box to help keep the feet stable. However, over time, this can actually cause the toes to bend in, leading to poor foot posture, bad gait, and even bunions. Now, a way that many swear by to help get those toes to expand back out to where they naturally should be is to walk around barefoot more or wear barefoot shoes. But I thought we could try to expedite this process. Introducing toe spacers. Little pieces of rubber that go in between your toes to help spread them out. Will wearing these for an entire week straight actually help me get some permanent toe spacing results? Will my posture improve? Will my gait improve? Will I biohack myself into oblivion? Let's find out. But you gotta focus. <sighs> Smell like rubber. So I literally just bought these off of Amazon. They're nothing special. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, should I wash these? You know, just in case they were a return item. So I'm just gonna pop my toes in those holes, I guess, and these pieces of rubber will help keep them spaced. Just gotta get my toes to go through there. Double base. Initial impressions, I'm really feeling it in the little toe. Like it feels like my little toe is just like So I'm gonna go work at my computer for a couple of hours and see if I can just zone out the feeling of this on my foot. The week has begun. In a nutshell, the purpose of toe spacers are to help regain the natural foot shape, thus preventing unwanted chronic foot problems and injuries such as bunions and the unnatural rolling of the foot but also having toes spaced at an optimal distance can help improve balance, posture from the ground up, as well as create a more efficient gait, which over time can make a huge difference, apparently. Now, according to most foot and toe experts, toe spacers should be worn for a few minutes to up to a maximum of a few hours. However, if my toes would allow it, I was going to try to wear these for an entire week straight. Now, a few hours in, everything was feeling good. But how would things start to feel when I would have to put on my shoes? Hopefully like one of my toes isn't getting its circulation cut off. <laughs> the toe just falls off. Look how wide they look. Uh, look at it, there's definitely some tension being created. Like my toes are trying to spread out even more than in the barefoot shoes you can see right here. Just did basically an upper body like circuit of some kind I just came up with, nothing really organized. By the way, if you want $5 off Bodyweight Beast 2.0, that's my 12 week calisthenics program, onlykindsfitness.com, use code FOCUS at the checkout, or use the link in the description, automatic $5 off. I feel like I kind of forgot that these spacers were on my feet when I was doing the workout, but then I started to run, and holy moly, specifically my little toe, just like, it started to feel like someone was trying to break it off with every step. I was planning on running two, only ran about three quarters of one mile. <sighs> but yeah, I had to call it because my little toes are burning. <laughs> I'm wiggling them right now. They're still feeling down there, so that's a good sign. Uh, Yeah, so I'm going to go home. I'm going to take these shoes off, and hopefully my toes look all right. Oh. Oh. Look all right. Man, that little toe is just burning. Like right here, it's like burning, but everything else feels okay. Oh, it feels good to take those shoes off. I think the shoes are pushing back in on the toe, so it's creating like an irritation. All right, I'm gonna keep these on, take a shower, get some nutrition in, and relax. Ugh. Definitely got wet. Hopefully that doesn't grow anything in there. <laughs> Anyways, so far so good. Once I took the shoes off, it felt like that little toe pain on the little side, the little toe has gone away. Other than that, without shoes or socks, I've been noticing my big toe has been like slipping out of these things. Yeah, so I might put some socks on just to hold this all together and prevent it from like sticking to the floor. 
because it kind of like sticks to the floor. Other than that, getting some post-workout nutrition in, gonna take it easy, take a break. It's only the beginning, so. We'll see how this goes. So keeping these toe spacers on all day was actually way more uncomfortable than I anticipated, especially while wearing shoes and especially towards the second half of the day. But putting on some loose socks made it a little bit more bearable because it held the toe spacers in place and prevented them from sticking to the ground while walking. All right guys, going to bed. Um, good night. Good morning. <laughs> So I'm just gonna disclose, when I was sleeping last night, I kicked these both off. And then when I woke up from that, let me tell you, the relief was insane. Especially on the little toe. I felt like, almost like a, you know like a satisfying cramp? Like it felt like a satisfying cramp in the foot, like, oh yeah, get that off. Being true to the experiment, I quickly put them back on, and uh, now it's morning time, so. I feel like maybe that little break at night's all I needed because they don't feel as uncomfortable as they did yesterday. Or maybe my toes are just really starting to bend apart. <sighs> Anyways, I need some coffee. Doing my best to keep the toe spacers in place throughout the entirety of day two, noting that most of the discomfort was in the lateral or pinky toe, probably because that is the toe for me that is most bent inward. On the contrary, people with bunions or developing bunions usually have the big toe bent inwards. Regardless, day two was pretty much uneventful. Now day three is where things would start to get interesting and more challenging. So I was just gonna have a normal work day and then I was gonna do a leg workout, but cutting the leg workout because we're actually traveling. Surprise, out of nowhere, going up north for a ski trip or a snowboard trip or both, whatever. Bit of an ache in the little toe, but other than that, toe's feeling pretty okay. How am I gonna get my feet in those boots? This is gonna be interesting, all right. Why aren't you driving? Because I got my toes all spaced out in here. Sure to be around all day. So apparently I've been irritable today, and maybe it's like a neurological issue stemming from my toes being slightly just uncomfortable. But yeah, I guess I've been a little bit just kind of meh today. I'm gonna take these shoes off, let these things breathe on our three hour and eight minute drive. So not wasting any time making it to the destination, trying out skiing first. Getting on the ski boots actually wasn't as hard as I thought, but once my feet were in the boots with the spacers, Oh, it's a little tight. There was an overwhelming pressure on that little toe, which was not pleasant, but was miraculously bearable. I'm a little nervous getting off this chairlift right here. <laughs> it's coming up. Oh gosh, here we go. I am pizza, it's all the way down. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, ow, oh, my toe. Man, it's beautiful out though. This is fun. Oh, that foot was really, that was a bother someone. Oh, it's still alive, we're okay. We're good. I would highly recommend not wearing toe spacers while trying to put on ski boots. Day four, this time hitting the slopes with the snowboard, I noticed that the snowboard boots were a lot looser than the ski boots. Toes feel better in the snowboard boots. Making it a lot less uncomfortable for my toes. I feel like I'm getting the hang of this. Now crazy enough, I actually forgot I was even wearing toe spacers towards the end of this day, which might be an indication that my toes were naturally adjusting to this space position. And just as quickly as they were gone, they have returned. Back home the next day, I felt like wearing the toe spacers, especially without shoes, was starting to feel normal. However, I noticed they were slipping off a lot easier, so I had to constantly readjust them. Just this morning, relaxing, unpacking, had some coffee, took it easy, but now I think I'm gonna head to the gym. I don't know if I'll do legs today because my legs are a little bit fried from the snowboarding, so it might just be kind of like a fun upper body day. Yeah, just kind of see where we're at. I'll keep you guys updated. This is not getting me in the mood for the gym. So in the gym doing upper body, as you can see, there is my toe trying to pop out of my shoe, but probably due to getting used to all the pressure in the ski boot and snowboard boots, this felt like a breeze. And then afterwards, the store to get some food, walking around, but not feeling the discomfort of the previous days. So it's definitely not as uncomfortable as it was on day one or two. My little toe's a little red. See that little bit of redness right here? It still is feeling, so we're good. Now I must have spoke too soon because for some reason on day six, I was met with sickening discomfort in the outer two little toes. Ugh. So I don't know why, but today, it seems like the cramping between these two outside little toes 
like if I bend them down. Oh, right now I'm going to the basement where I'm gonna do a leg workout. And during this workout, the slight uneasiness cramping sensation on my outer two little toes actually had a negative impact on my overall workout intensity. <sighs> With each rep rather than feeling it in the target muscles, I felt that additional slight cramping in the toes, which hindered the overall workout experience. But even so, I wanted to take another swing at a run with the toe spacers on. I probably should just call it here, but now I'm actually going to go do a jog. I'm hoping two miles. So, throwing on some pants and headed out. Oh, the worst is when like the toe gets caught. Ow. And let me tell you, on top of unfavorable toe conditions were unfavorable weather conditions. I think I subconsciously wanted to keep my toes up, so rather than landing on the balls of my feet, I was kind of slapping every step. In order to minimize this impact, I tried to run mostly off-road. It took the edge off for a bit, but on top of the snowy mud, the pressure on the outer little toe from the shoes and the cramping made me call it around one mile. Oh, this run's a mess. Thanks, honey, for letting me use your hair dryer. Oh, oh boy. Now the rest of day six, I felt like I had irritability stemming from my little toes. However, I was almost done with this challenge. Why not? So I pushed through the final day. Final day, baby. Using these knockoff Crocs to help spread the toes off as I walk. Still can't wait to take these spacers off. Do what we have. It is time. All right, let's do this. <laughs> uh, uh. Are they more spaced? So, I don't know, that does look a little more spaced to be honest with you. I don't know, what do you guys think? Yeah, like look at that, I don't know. Oh, they are kind of more spaced, Ugh. So it worked. <laughs> so it is 48 hours after removing the toe spacers and it looks like all of my toes went back to the normal spacing before I started this experiment. So it looks like if you don't use it, you lose it and you lose it pretty fast, at least in this case. First of all, based on my experience, if I was recommending to myself, I would not recommend wearing toe spacers for an entire week straight to make my toes more spaced out. First of all, severely uncomfortable, and I'm also kind of lucky that I didn't like cut off any circulation to my little toes, especially when shoving them into those ski boots. Now also something I noticed that is important that is actually contrary to what I thought was gonna happen, my gait was worse after doing this experiment for about a day or so. Ideally, having the toes slightly spaced might give an individual better gait because of a better ground connection. For me, when wearing the toe spacers, not because my toes were spaced, but because of the discomfort, I for some reason was kind of walking in more towards the big toe, which for me was actually a worse way to walk. And then when I removed those toe spacers, I being used to doing that for over a week, noticed I actually had more collapsing inward of the foot. Because of the discomfort, I adjusted my steps to an actual worse gait. And that kind of lasted for about a day after I did this experiment. So at the end of the day, I would say to myself, I don't recommend wearing toe spacers for an entire week straight. But if my toes were looking squished together chronically, especially while wearing these tight tennis shoes, etc., etc., I would recommend to myself, hey, maybe try those toe spacers to help those toes that are just way too squished together start to separate while maybe you're sitting down, relaxing, etc., one, two hours a day at the most. And I would probably especially recommend it to myself, especially if my big toe is really crunched in, because that's where it really seems like the problem develops for a lot of people, and you know, they get like bunions, etc. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. More challenges coming out. I got a great one next week. I think you guys are going to really enjoy, so stay tuned. Hope you all have a great day. Peace. I will see you all in the next video.